Are you looking for a church to go to? Well, here are five red flags to look out for. Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft, where I build this big church in Minecraft while I talk about Christianity. And today I'm going to be giving some advice about which churches are good to go to and which are not. So if you are already in a great church and you're happy with it and you have a good community, I suggest you stop watching right now because I don't want to um, make anyone feel like they need some better church to go to. So as long as you don't have serious doubts about your own church community, then I don't really think this video is helpful for you. This is for people who might be looking for a church, who aren't really settled in any one church, and would like some advice on which churches are good to choose. So, um, first I'm gonna say basically which churches to rule out from the start, and then I'm gonna say which churches I think are the ideal. So the first thing, uh, the first kind of church you want to immediately rule out, immediate red flag, is a progressive church. Now, by progressive, I don't just mean some people in the church voted for Obama once. I mean a church that explicitly um, allies itself with progressive Christianity. And there's a very easy way to tell which churches are part of this. If they display any sort of pride flag on their website or on their building, or if they say they're an open and affirming church, that means that they are progressive Christians. And that means you should just walk right out with, um, without uh, considering further. Why? Because um, really you'll only find this in the mainline Protestant denominations. Not all mainline churches are this way, but a good majority of them are. And um, it's there's been debates for like 30 years now about whether the mainline churches should still be historically Christian or whether they need to abandon historic Christianity in favor of something that's more inclusive to LGBTQ people. Now, um, the LGBT issue in and of itself does not define the essence of Christianity or the gospel, but in our day and age, in America, it's a very good litmus test for which churches have abandoned the faith and which have not. So, it doesn't mean every single Christian who supports LGBT is a fake Christian. I'm not saying that at all. At one point, for the first two years of me being Christian, I supported LGBT because that was just what I was raised with, and I it took me a while for it took a while for me to adopt a completely different um, view on that. But if your church calls itself open and affirming, or um, if a church that you are considering calls itself open and affirming, uh, that is your signal to just um, look look for a different church. So, yeah, it's, I think it's pretty, I think that, that's pretty simple. That's probably the, the easiest to determine right from, right from the beginning. So, here's another red flag. Here, this is the second one. So, you're going to want to avoid any sort of prosperity gospel church. Now, most of these prosperity gospel churches will be, like, some sort of mega churches. Um, like, think, you know, Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland... Uh, Benny Hinn, and even if you're not going to go to these churches, I'd suggest you, like, don't listen online to, like, churches that preach the prosperity gospel. So what is the prosperity gospel? Basically, um, I mean, it's been so common in American culture that you, most people, even not non-Christians know what it is, but if you're uh, from a place like me, like New York, um, and which is not a Christian culture, you might not know what this is. So the prosperity gospel is this idea that if you have enough faith, God will give you material blessings, which is completely goes against scripture. It's a false gospel. Um, the, the gospel is not about physical material blessings. It's that salvation is offered in Christ to all who believe. Salvation does not mean material blessings, and many times the Bible says that if you become Christian, you might actually suffer materially. So that's a really bad sales pitch if you think about it, but it's what Jesus said. Because Jesus wasn't trying to sell the gospel, Jesus was trying to proclaim the gospel. Um, if he was trying to sell it, he would just say, yeah, you'll get, you know, a bunch of free stuff if you follow me. But no, he said you may lose everything, but he said those who lose their lives for my sake will find it. So yeah, the prosperity gospel is a false gospel. Now it's 
prosperity gospel churches don't say, hey, we teach the prosperity gospel. It would be a lot easier if they did. But um, there's not some, like, symbol you can look out for like you can for the progressive churches. You just kind of have to listen to what they say. And generally, you can get a pretty good sense of it. If they say things like, hey, your cup will overflow with blessings. Um, or, like, your finances are about to really improve. Sorry, I, I, I know this is kind of a bit bigoted. I always do southern accents when I'm imitating, like, dumb American Christians. I know I shouldn't do that. Yeah, as... As a New Yorker, I still have a bit of implicit bias against, against you know, white Southerners. I shouldn't. It's kind of racist. But, uh, not really. But you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, you're, you're going to want to look out for that. Like, a, a prosperity gospel church is not a real church. So, um, yeah, also things like, you know, this thing called the word of faith movement. Like, your words have power and you can speak things into existence. That's also part of the prosperity gospel. And, you know... Of course, with everything, there's a spectrum, so even if there's a little bit of that influence, it doesn't mean it's, like, completely bad, but generally, I would completely avoid churches like that. Um, if, if, if you already are part of a church like that, you're probably not following my page, so I don't think many of this is even going to be a problem for many of you, but I just have to say that, just because there are a lot of things that sound good and that aren't. So, another thing to avoid, the third type is, I would say a more some of the more dispensational churches now dispensational is one of those big theology words e even if they're not dispensational uh a church that talks a lot about politics on the left or the right i already covered the progressive churches so i'm referring now to more of the churches that say like yo the state of israel is going to save the world and trump is coming back to save the country so churches that clearly have a political agenda like if everyone flies american flags or if the p pastor like constantly talks about political things now i don't think churches should be completely apolitical i think churches should denounce abortion i think churches should work for anything that benefits the poor and sometimes that might mean getting involved in at least local politics but if the main message is about you know some political figure these days it's usually trump um then I would say you should probably not be involved with, with a church like that. So yeah, that that's the third thing. The fourth type of church to avoid is... Um, now, generally, with some exceptions, I'd say most non-denominational churches should be avoided. And um, people might disagree with me that it's not that every non-denominational church is bad. It's just that fr from a non-denominational church, you never know what you're getting. Like, if you go to certain... Uh, more confessional Presbyterian denominations or Lutheran denominations like the PCA or the LCMS, you know what you're going to get. You know that whatever individual church you go to, you're going to hear the word preached and the sacraments administered. But, um, yeah, so I would, I would caution against any church that does not take the sacraments seriously. So what are the sacraments? Um, for Reformed people, there are two. There's baptism and the lord's supper but you're only baptized once in your life yes only once that's a topic for another time some people think they should be rebaptized. i disagree um so churches that either don't administer the lord's supper like very frequently i'd say uh once a month is best once a week is good too once every like three months is the bare minimum but churches that don't take the lord's supper seriously or say it's just a symbol or let absolutely anyone come and take it no matter what um that is a church to avoid so john calvin said that there were three marks of a true church it's of course the preaching of the word so a church that doesn't take the bible seriously should also be avoided um the administration of the sacraments i'm not I'm, I'm including the not taking the Bible seriously as part of the progressive churches. So the preaching of the word, the administration of the sacraments, and um, right use of church discipline. Um, so church discipline means if, some, if people in your congregation are doing the wrong thing, the church says something about it and doesn't let people get away with it. Um, so yeah, those are the marks of a true church according to John Calvin. So a church that does not properly administer the sacraments is not a true church and i have to say it's very rare for a back for a non-denominational church and kind of rare for a baptist church to take the sacraments seriously a lot of baptist churches don't even call them sacraments they just call them ordinances um but no there's there's sacraments and 
At, uh, some people may, dis may disagree, but in the Reformed tradition, you need to take the sacraments seriously to be a true church because the sacraments are an essential part of spiritual nourishment. And if your church does not administer the sacraments, you're not getting spiritually nourished. So yeah, the sacraments are something that you need. Um, the fourth one, I would say uh, this kind of church to avoid is a seeker-sensitive church. Now, of course, this is also a spectrum. There are some churches that are like kind of seeker-sensitive, but not as bad. Like a church that just in general, there, there's kind of overlap with the progressive churches that doesn't really care about what you believe um, that's just completely loose in terms of their teachings. Now, I have a, a very wide tolerance for um, which kinds of churches and their teachings are okay, as well, as you're about to find out. But, um, of course, we, we have to draw the line somewhere. So if they are just completely libertarian with what everyone believes and they are really careful not to offend anyone, I would say those kinds of churches should be avoided. And the last one is just think about the community of the church. Does it act like a cult? Do they treat their pastor like he's some completely uh, infallible man of God who no one can ever question? Like, if there's no accountability for their pastor, that's a big red flag. If their pastor is treated like some great prophet, that's a big, big red flag. If this individual church says that they're one of the few true churches in existence, that's a bit, bit red flag. So yeah, any church that exhibits cultish behavior should be avoided. There are a lot of churches, or like some like hyper-traditional churches that really um, treat women horribly and um, basically want to control your whole life way beyond what the New Testament says um, church discipline should do. Uh, those kinds of churches should be avoided. Now, th those kinds of churches aren't really that common, so I'm not just talking about a, a, a conservative church or a church that exercises proper church discipline, which they need to. But um, there are some churches that are cultish in nature, so that's the those are the kinds that should be avoided. And how do I get down? Um, so now um, I've gone over the negatives. Now let's go over the positives. What kinds of churches do I recommend? So um, the three kinds of churches I would most highly recommend are a confessional, and a confessional means not theologically liberal, confessional means actually in line with their own traditions, a confessional Presbyterian, Lutheran, or Anglican church. Those are the kinds of churches I would most recommend. So um, of each kinds of those churches, there are multiple denominations. So let's go over the few. For Presbyterians, the biggest confessional denomination is the PCA. Other confessional denominations are the OPC, ECO, the EPC, and um, the PCUSA. The majority of the PCUSA is theologically liberal, but there still are a small minority of confessional Presbyterian churches within the PCUSA. Mine is has some problems, is a bit liberal in some ways, but does not fly a pride flag or anything. So they're not um, they're not explicitly progressive. So any of those would be good for Lutherans. Um, the AALC or the LCMS or the um, WELS um, those are all confessional Lutheran churches, and it's the same deal for the ELCA. Most of the ELCAs are progressive and should be avoided, but there still are a minority of some that are okay and. Once again, the way to tell is, do they fly a pride flag or not? That is really a, a very easy and very helpful litmus test. For Anglicans, most Episcopal churches are extremely progressive. There might be some that are not, but um, Episcopals are a denomination of Anglicans. Mostly they've gone astray. There might be a few that are still good. But um, the... Anglican Church of North America, that's different, and that's actually very solid for the most part. So I would recommend that. And so yeah, those are the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, the Anglicans. By the way, these are all in America, so if you're not in America, um, then see which churches in your country those churches are similar to, I guess. Um, Meth for Methodists, once again, see if there's a pride flag or not. Um, if there's not... It, it, once again, you might ask, why am I obsessing over the whole LGBT pride thing? It's not that it's a big theological issue by itself. It's just a good litmus test for whether 
a certain Protestant church has the problem that a lot of Protestant churches do, which is theological liberalism. Uh, Methodist churches are okay, uh, generally speaking. Um, and, you know, some of you are going to hate me for this. Um, if you really can't find any of those, if you live somewhere that's more remote, if you don't live near a big city where you can't find them, I, th I suggest you be open to uh, going to a Roman Catholic church or Eastern Orthodox church. Now, that's more of a big commitment. You have to actually commit yourself to those denominations if you're going to join. But they're still true forms of Christianity. Some people may have told you otherwise. I disagree. I have a recent video explaining why I think that. Um, so some of you may just be totally opposed to being Catholic or Orthodox, and I understand. But if you're not, I, and if you are still looking for a church, I recommend you check out Catholicism or Eastern Orthodoxy because there will almost always be a Catholic church near where you are. And while though there are a lot of problems with it, there are also a lot that's really good about it. There's also a lot that's really good about it. So yeah, those are, that's just basically my advice for if you're looking for a church and you want to know which kinds of churches are good and bad. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.